Blessings and greetings, dear friends and everybody. Welcome to Hukalo TV's Saturday regular webinar. My name is Rowie. I'm here with my partner today, Kim. And I'm just doing a quick introduction because we have two very, very special people with us today. Well, in fact, we have loads of special people with us today, but we have two very special challenges with us today, Max and Roxy, who will be doing the, um, the channeling for today. I put the camera down a little bit more. Get me in the picture. Um, we're just going to be doing an interesting format today, if you choose to do so. Um, how we're going to interact, we're going to have both Max and Roxy in a channeling state. And if you have questions for them, you can ask these questions in the in the chat boxes, the Skype groups, and we will be giving two different perspectives on the on the questions. If you do have a question, you just want to interact with one of the beings, that's fine as well. We can't force you to do anything, so... Um, but that is the kind of uh, the open floor today. We're going to do a few announcements, and then once we've done the announcements, Max will do a blessing, and um, Sabrina will just uh, greet and introduce everybody into the room. So there's a few announcements here. We'll just quickly go through them all. Um, the most important one is the, the Reiki class. Uh, we've got a Reiki 2 class. Uh, it's, it's two classes on the 16th of November, um, $150. Um, we encourage everybody to learn that and you'll be able to actually practice Reiki after learning that as well. So it's something you can go out there and interact with people and help. Um, the second is the exciting news of our Russian website has been created and um, it's open to donations right now. So we're looking to raise a certain amount of funds um, for those donations. We're announced that on the site. I think it's in the region of about $250. Um, also, um, Hukalo is looking for some new donations for a bigger web room um, so we can have a big webinar and expand with our growth. And we're looking for our $60 for that. And the new site, um, we are looking for donations for that too. Um, so if you're able to help us out and allow us to grow, um, we are ready to receive those donations and put them into action and create a better experience for everybody who's joining along. Yeah, um, you can send a PayPal to uh, webinars at hu humancolony.org, webinars at humancolony.org, or just go to humancolony.org, click on donate, and there is a button for donating. And thank you, everybody, who donated for the previous upgrade. It was wonderful. In a couple of days, we got all the money. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Yes, we will post a direct link for that as well. Someone just said in the webinar there. So, yeah, there will be links up for that. I'll make sure some posts are up on the website. Um, coming up events. Next event we'll have later on today at 5 p.m. EST, which will be story time with Roxanne Swainart. And um, anyone's welcome to come and do a channel story, and uh, any story, if they want. It doesn't have to be channel. It can just be anything you want, a live story, a, a made-up story, anything. It's just a... A lot of fun, a lot of good times, so please join Roxy at 5 p.m. for that. And then tomorrow, uh, Sabrina's doing the guided meditation on the 8th of November at 7 p.m. EST. Uh, the last one was really awesome, so I encourage everyone to come to the next one. Um, also, if you get our events, um, please reshare them, and please invite your circles, especially the people that will be interested, because... Sometimes we have problem inviting circles and we can't reach everyone we want to, so we really encourage, if you can't donate, at least share, because sharing is caring. As well. So, also, um, a couple of announcements. Obviously, Jim's going to be doing next week's webinar, and then on the 21st of November, Kim and Karen are going to be doing the webinar together, so we're really looking forward to that one. And two little angels. And... On the 11th of the 11th of November, Will and Karen and myself will be doing a hangout, 11-11 um, hangout. Um, funnily enough, it will be 12-11, 12-11 here for me when I do it. Um, <laughs> that was quite funny. So that's all the announcements. I want to welcome everybody today. I hope they have a great time with the webinar. I'd just like to introduce, uh, shall I introduce Sabrina or Max? Do you want to do the blessing first? Uh, you're muted right now. Yeah. So I'll just, yeah. I'll just let me introduce now. yeah everybody, and then uh, we'll go ahead with the blessing. So uh, thank you, Roy, for the announcements, and and yes, I want to encourage people to uh, do Reiki two. Um, a lot of people joined Reiki one. I think everybody really enjoyed it, um, and 
you know, we had some of our BT friends join us also and gave us messages and uh, and there's a lot of learning going on. There's also um, uh, the business aspect of of Reiki is also being uh, given. So so you also learned how to how to set up your own business in the Reiki. So please do join uh, and do Reiki too. It's hundred and fifty dollars, which is very reasonable and uh, you're getting a lot for your money and not only it you'll be help not only you'll be helping yourself but you'll be helping others uh, along with this for it doesn't just you know it it helps with healing the spirit the body the mind so all of these things are uh, very good for the ascension yeah. Um, Thank you, everybody, for making it happen. The miracle already happened. The school is alive and running. We have two teachers, Jim and me. For December, we are looking for the third teacher because I will be um, busy moving to San Diego. But the school is active. And to sign up for the class, write to Reiki at human, uh, humancolony.org. So it's a Hugh Color Reiki school. <clears throat> And this, uh, the class goes partly channeled. It's it's a channel class by me and Jim, and partly it's we are sharing our experience. And this time we'll share experience how to run a Reiki business. Jim is running a Reiki business. I am having tons of customers, more than I can handle. So, so, and again, it's uh, you can pay later. So you can take a class now, learn how to run a Reiki business, become a Reiki practitioner and earn the money by doing Reiki and send us the money to pay for the class. 150 you can earn like from one client, one rich client or three <laughs> or three clients. Yes, it's it's very easy. Um, thank you, Sabrina, and thank you everybody who participated. People are guided to us, nobody comes at random, and um, spirit is just working all the way, and thank you for it to, to the universe and to everybody for making it happen. It's a pleasure to ride this wave. Okay, on that note, I would like to introduce um, all of all of the members that are here. Uh, Christopher, welcome Christopher. <laughs> Roy and Kim, of course, Johannes, Karen, Max, Roxanne, Sean, and Sheer. Valerie, thank you everyone for being here. Um, spending this time with us and on that note I will give it to Max to do the blessing for today. Wonderful. I will be present. I wouldn't I wouldn't leave like Jim does leave during the channel. I'm still staying here and I'm inviting <clears throat> my friendly spirits, my higher self and the collective to to be with me and to enter and we call this collective Erru, Erru, Erru. All right. I bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, the universe. Thank you, the fabric of time. Thank you, the matrix of happiness. Thank you, the energy of the source. We are blessed. It's nice to be with you. We are united. We are one. Today, we want to bring up couple of the words, couple of the symbols of shifting and healing, shifting and healing. We shift wonderfully. One day you wake up, you just realize, it, realize you shifted to, the new uni, to, to a new universe, to a new universe. Shifting is so easy these days. The veil becomes so thin. Their voices from, from other side speak all the time. They, they make so much wonderful noise. So you can pick between these noises what you really want and you can discover who you really are. Now coughing and being sick with flu, you were thinking that this is a curse. No, it is just a tool for shifting. Having sneezing is detoxifying all liquids coming out of you can out the vortexes of dark energy you can release 
breathing out, coughing out. You can release all what you can do this time of the year is detoxify in all possible ways. Now, what do you want to release? Unhappy love, being abandoned by a lover, not being accepted by a lover, not being accepted by adults when you were a child. All those traumas, you, you block them so much you don't even remember them. But the image of your lover coming with someone else <laughs> in your mind, it was so painful. You were crying. Now I'm walking on the street in Chicago. There is a lot of people walking on streets. Surprise. Unusual. Anyway, walking on the street, and once in a while you see a beautiful lady crying over the cell phone. Yeah, somebody said something or typed something, and she is crying. That kind of trauma is blocking the flow of energy to you. That kind of childhood, young love trauma, rejection trauma, not love trauma, ignoring trauma, being ignored trauma. Now it's time to release. <laughs> you didn't realize it was a blessing. It was a blessing. Now when you see that happening, you just smile and say, whatever. <laughs> I'm loved anyway. I bless you and how can you, I serve you more? That's it. I know I am loved, and if someone turned their back to me, it is just fine, just fine. All is good. Bless, I bless you. We bless you all. We are united. We are one. Roxy, take it if you will. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Um, <clears throat> do we want to... No, no. That that kind of threw me because I thought you were going to channel afterwards, after the blessing. So um, I'll channel first. Greetings once again to the Collective. This is Osiphius from the Oversoul Collective Fire. We bid you a good day. The idea is we will bring forth an idea message. Choose what you will. Reflect how you will. It is the only thing that you understand, and that is your subjective reality, according to you. Hmm. How beautiful is that? Let us dance in this field a little bit. It is an idea, truly. <clears throat> Scary idea for a lot of you to know that you're the only one there. Everything that you see about you is an image. It is a vibrational idea light, let's say, collapsing down to give you the frequency image that your senses can perceive to give you the experience. Hmm? That's all it is. Scary. The vibration that you call an entity a lover in that as aspect. A best friend. Hmm? The clerk. The salesman. The mother. The father. They're versions. They're versions of what you are. You're the perceiver of them. You get to choose that idea of version. Their energy is present. Oh, yes, it's called co-creation. But in that idea, you're choosing what they are. You're choosing what they are. You're choosing. So in the idea aspect, you get a version of an idea reality, and it doesn't jive with you. Who are you getting mad at? The entity? The version? Hmm? The circumstance? Or are you getting, let's say, getting an opportunity of the mastery work to look at yourself? It's difficult, isn't it, here in polarity we're going to call this? Difficult to look at the idea of polarity and say, how is everything perfect? And we've been, idea, giving you this idea meaning that it is perfect you have a process of waking up will equate it to it's like why is this shit happening to me why are they doing that to me to why am I doing this to myself to shit I'm doing this to everything is perfect 
So you're climbing up this idea ascension ladder, and the idea is your universe is subjective. Listen to it again. Your universe is subjective. There's no objective. There's no observer. Your mind can observe the reality of the separation between the two minds inside. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the observer uh, from an objective point of view. It's all subjective. There is no objective. There is no observer. So it's all your game, your show, your choosing to see everything perfect. What causes in that idea? What causes it to be the idea of polarity? Unperfect, out of bounds, hmm? distorted. It's you, Master. Oh, yes. Are you looking at it as, what did I do to earn this? What did I do, let's say, to have this faulted in me? It's not your fault. You chose it. I want you to dig into the idea. Dig deep now. Slowly. No expectations, no outcome. Dig deep. And really accept the idea of your worthiness. Firstly. Secondly, we would like you to do another idea. Dig deep and know. <clears throat> Very difficult to explain. We've done it before. Know that you're ascending a species. You're already ascended. You're ascended. You're already that. But you took the little fractal to ascend the species. But you don't focus on humanity. Paradox. You focus on you from the subjective point of view to offer that shift in humanity. Because if you saw everything as perfect and gave the opportunity for the next entity co-creating with you to reflect back to themselves, they see everything perfect and so on and so on. What happens? Perfection. Booyah. So the subjective point of view is your journey. When it doesn't resonate, let it go. You're going to get mad at it? Hmm? You will continue the idea of that. Don't forget the mirror is perfect. When you get mad, you tell them waves that are reflecting back to you, be mad. They go back out as mad, they come back as mad. Mad, bad, mad, 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 bad, bad, until you let it go. You can conceivably, let's say, talk yourself into it with your logical mind on how to fix it. You don't need to fix shit. Nothing's broken. Nothing. Your ideas of planning, of, let's say, having an outcome, a goal, wonderful. Truly, it's not needed. What's going to happen? Only love. Only love's going to happen because you're love. You're all that is. You're already ascended. So if you're the projector of your reality and you're not intentionally given, it, let's say, an idea of what you're perceiving it as, mad, upset, let's say, non-perfect, then what is the only thing left that can emanate from you? Your projector. Hmm? What? I dare say love. The state of being that you were created in as and always will be. Hmm? So what will happen? Hmm? How about this? Love. And we're not talking an idea of in love emotionally. I'm talking about the state of being that creates everything in perfection. Perfect. Every time. And you get out of your own way and allow this idea of you already being ascended to allow everything that comes in to inhibit you to see it as love and let it go and no longer feed it. Be naked. Be vulnerable. And you will shift in an accelerated fashion where you'll shit your pants a lot of times. Because it's so beautiful. You'll cry the deepest idea. The most, let's say, penetrating tears of joy. Because you feel yourself. 
you feel home. That longing that you've all been, let's say, looking for since birth. Hmm? If you let go, the only thing that can happen is love. Your mind. Your construct. Your mind. Your illusion. Is the one that, let's say, frictions against the idea that's being offered. The mastery is to let it go and know that the illusion is love. Distorted by the subjective view that lies within you, that you chose to take on to heal to ascend an entire species, that of humanity. Booyah! This is all we have for this space time now. We will return an idea, the idea to Max, if he chooses to move forward. Thank you. We invite questions. Sabrina, do you have a Sorry. question? Um, you had a question from um, Liney? Yeah, I've got one from Liney and um, one from Mo. So uh, the first one, which is going to be interesting to ask both of you, and I'll first address Max on this one, or uh, whoever Max Max, are you channeling right now? Uh, I'm not living. Max is here. Eru is here. Everybody is here. The universe is here. Okay, all right. Um, Liney heard a female voice in her head last night, and she would like to find out who or what it was. And I would like to find out from both of you what your perspective is on hearing voices in your head. Maxwell, please go. Uh, just a second. Just a second. Yeah, not hearing voices in uh, your head would be some sort of an abnormality these days. Uh, we find it's um, absolutely normal to hear voices in the head all the time. <clears throat> we sense their young female human or human hybrid young female and to connect to her just speak to her and uh, we send you a, an image of um, Max doesn't know the word but basically it's a flower like ca purple chamomile flower that would look like purple chamomile flower that's all we have Roy, may I go now? Go yes, yes. ahead, see. The idea, this female voice, you've listened, tuned in to the party. I'm going to give you an equatable idea. Let go of any ideas right now. Clear your mind, all of you together as one. Be open. Mm, most certainly. Firstly, we'd like you to understand, let's say, me and the idea of Roy. Uh, having a 3D conversation in the middle of a party. Mm -hmm. And then there's background chatter. There's other people present in the party. It's not a small party, it's a booming party. Let's say there's a legion in there. We'll call it like 100, 150,000 at this party. So you are hearing the party. Much like me and Roey are having a 3D conversation back and forth, we can tune in to another conversation. You have shifted your frequency in that idea. You have found, Liney, that idea of your party. You have frequency friends within there. The idea of the purple chamomile flower is maybe, choosing this if you choose, a, let's say, connection to that. Roxy sees all of her party members as colors, vibrational colors, much like taking paint and splashing onto a canvas. Hmm? That kind of idea. So that's the connection to this idea hybrid female, oh, most certainly. Hmm? Yael, most certainly. Connection, surely. 
how you choose it is up to you. Picture yourself if you want to use a party or maybe a get-together, a drumming circle, matters not. Big convention, however you see talking to your legion of heirs. All of your fellow guides, spiritual oversoul friends, does not matter. Connect with this idea, speak to this idea. Trust hmm. this idea. Booyah. And the name Daisy comes. Oh. Next question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mo Momentum um, was asking on the on the Google Momentum chat. Momentum of light. Yes. I Rainbow. What's up? <laughs> I'm sure he gives you a big high five. Um, he would like to get your perspective on uh, a recent happening called the Cash Foundation um, releasing free energy and how that's going to impact our ascension on the planet. I hope I got that right, Matt. That is correct. Max, would you care to go? Can you can you give me more detail? Can you expand? I barely know about that. I need more connection to that. Okay. Um, the Cash Foundation is a uh, is founded by an Iranian scientist, a nuclear physicist, who is releasing plasma technology. Um, he claims to be able to revolutionize nearly every mode of transport, every uh, energy provision that's needed on this planet, um, and he's been given the government 10 days in order to react, and he's giving out all his information for free, uh, all his patents, designs, so everyone can replicate it if they wish. Mm -hmm. All right. Um we sense that the outcome is yet unclear. The future is not yet formed. It seems to us that the probability of that first wave to actually hit the target is we don't want to say the number, but is Unlikely, unlikely yet, but the first wave shakes everything else and secondary wave starts even stronger. So the most likely would be um, one of the significant, the wave number seven, the wave number 11 from now, which might happen within two or three years. Yes, there is so many um, inventors who have that. There is so many companies who have that. There is even more secret uh, black project black project is called black projects which are not even registered who have that and the main resistance to that is on human social level is the fear that the economy will fall you see you you, you improve the production absolutely every house having air <laughs> generators free energy generators, so there is no reason to pay for the electricity. Every house has free water because the water with free energy can be generated right just from the air. You don't even have to dig or pull, pull, the, wire, pull, pull the pipes. Uh, the car is running on free energy. <laughs> the whole economy will fall apart just because the main uh, real value, the main gold is not the main thing. Oil is the main thing and the, the main exchange medium in the current economy. So that idea of exchange over oil will fall apart. You know, the the economy is is the most re retrograde, the most conservative, the most backward part of the development. The technology is already there. The society wants it, but economy economy is, fails to reform fast enough to accommodate. So if the oil fail, falls, fails as a main exchange medium, then there is an obvious danger that the whole thing will go down and we, we the Earth dra is dragged down to their, you know, one of the scenarios. And, thank you, and, 
So the the not only the technology has to come out, the banks, the banks, the governments, the societies have to adjust, adjust, and they would adjust only under the pressure. So this first wave will create the understanding among the bankers, among the politicians, among the people, and all the people, among the people who watch television, that something has to be done very urgently to accommodate this new thing, to replace the oil as exchange, the, as a symbol of exchange with something else. And this something else is love and respect. Love and respect. Trust, love and respect. <laughs> that is happening and it's going to happen for the next 50 years in waves and it will go up and down. So be ready for the ride and we bless you all. It's a wonderful ride. Ride the wave. That's it. Hmm. Most certainly. We concur with the idea of the economic structure failure. Mm -hmm. When this gets released, everyone's not going to run to it. Why? Because you're scared. There's too much fear. Let's think about the coal industry. Let's think about those families. They're not going to believe it. They're going to talk it down. They're going to fight against it because they fear their own future probabilities. How are they going to survive if all this goes away? So we don't shock ourselves, humanity. We don't throw a monkey into the idea works. We're an ascension. We ascend. We evolve. We are revolution leading to revelation. This is a construct, a stricture of revolution. Oh, yes, most certainly. And it will be used as it's accepted. It will not throw it into the works and then everyone says poof, but the economic structure will, hmm, let's say, lead to a non-earth, hmm, let's just say it and keep it at that. That's not going to happen. Why? It's too much love. We're not in a rush. You may be feeling in a rush. I don't want to pay bills anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pay for this anymore. Truly, of course. But you're not on another timeline, so relax. Truly. So in order for that other timeline to be that, you deal, if you will, by allowing and giving love to this idea for the Earth timeline. So the higher idea realm of frequency Earth 4D can be. Mm, truly. So these ideas that are coming out, free energy, magnetic, magnetic energy that's not been released as, let's say, on a high frequency yet, that's coming as well. So many ways, as the idea of Maxwell said, pulling water out of the air. 1929 invention. Simple. Hmm? All that's coming. Don't rush it. Don't get mad at it. Love it. Allow it. And remember, there's a billion Earths. So if you want one, create it in your bubble, and it will come. Booyah. This is all, Roy. Thank you, guys. Sabrina? Sean had a question. Yes, yeah, the Earth's economy like a... Is it our collective, or is it like a separate entity? It is our conscious collective and greetings to that of Sean, our eternal love to you. Much love, my eternal love to you, and many blessings. From Absolutely. our perspective, it is a collective whole agreement, if you will. Maxwell, go ahead. <sighs> As you are multidimensional, the economy is multidimensional. Absolutely. Elohim, El, are the names of the spirit world, spirit level, spirit, <laughs> it's not even level, spirit universe, um, energies and vibrations which watch over the economy. And of course the humans have free will. Humans individually, human <clears throat> small groups, medium groups, huge groups, their countries, their 
layers of society, the whole human collective on the physical level and even more on spiritual level, all of the above have free will which is listened to. And it is shifting as you see, shifting is very fast. Of course the economy has its own weird mind and weird emotions which are so non-human. And again, it's not independent, it, also, it has its own consciousness but it's not independent, it is bound by resonation to the future, to the past, to the parallel dimensions. And one of the connections, huge connection, is the trauma of Atlantis, trauma of destruction of Atlantis. That's where we have our karmic past, karmic trauma, which we as a collective are healing right now. And we wish ourselves, we wish you to heal it beautifully. Be proactive, imagine new solutions. Human colony is about being proactive, networking, discussing, creative new positive solutions and seeing that the glass is full of <laughs> blessing, full of bliss. The glass is full of bliss. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. I just want to say much love to you too and many blessings. Thank you. Your questions was wonderful. Okay, now I have uh, two questions from Luke. Um, one was uh, he wanted to switch to a, vegetar a vegan diet, but um, he wanted to check out with his guys if it would be good for his body or should he wait some more. Maxwell, are you choosing? Yes, the idea is beautiful. It is doable. It is absolutely doable. You see, the body is a nice thing, a nice thing you, temporary, you own temporarily. You have it for a short while and use it well. The idea is beautiful, the idea is perfect. So as a symbol it shines, write it as you wish. And be practical, uh, the body can exist on vegan diet, sure it can. And to make it coherent, coherence is the, the key word, coherence, pay attention to coherence. So whatever improves the coherence of the body, is great. Coherence means harmony in the body. Each cell shines. Each cell is full of the divine love, full of the source love. And when you eat consciously, when you bless your food, when you eat the food which is full of this divine love, which is full of energy, and you thank the sun which is conserved there, you thank the source energy which is conserved there, it is a symbol of the source energy. When you take it in and make it your own, make it vibrate better in your cells, you unite, you become one with the biosphere and you become one with people who share the food with you. One of their warnings is don't separate yourself from your friends. If your friends eat something, just eat at least a little bit to synchronize, to take in the same food they do. It doesn't change your diet but it is symbolically allow you, allows you to share the same, it's called quantum states of the matter, quantum states of the vibration, the spin of the electrons. When you split the food it is the same vibration you take in, you drink in, you breathe in and you synchronize with people you love. So don't separate yourself by the diet. Still eat a little bit, 
but whatever makes your body shine is a prop an idea of veganism is beautiful and by itself it, it's charged so go ahead and adjust your diet maybe not hundred percent but adjust your diet to shine better be more harmonious be more coherent thank you <clears throat> that of Luke the idea of vegan is a definition definitions have endings they have stricture when you become an idea on the 3D bound, then means you have to stay within the limitations of that idea. All ideas are an idea of image. Oh, yes. I'm kicking the ass for a lot of you. That's fine. You're allowed to do it. Then do it. Be a vegan. But there's one day, maybe, if you choose, you'll have an urge. That's not vegan. And you're beating yourself up. I can't. I'm this. I'm that. Who are you pleasing? Hmm? What status are you showing to the world that I'm allowed to be a vegan, I can be a vegan, or I have the discipline to be a vegan? Look at me. Booyah, I'm a vegan. Great. Now what? Are you hungry? Is your body fed? I'm not saying you cannot be a vegan, but don't define yourself as that. You may have the apparency of eating only vegan foods. If that's what your body is saying to you, I'm trusting you. You. I'm trusting what your creation is the body every moment brand new according to you oh yes <laughs> so it's your authority that you're now questioning truly do I need to give myself up to an idea so I can be healthy or can I choose what my body tells me to eat and trust myself to become the individual singularity I am that I have forgotten this whole reason for this experiential journey into the unknown mm hmm be the vegan if you choose. Live the stricture if you choose. Booyah. I dare say, however, you are your own master. You know your body, for it is your creation. Listen to it. It'll tell you, I need something salty. I need something sweet. I need something meaty. I need something milky. And follow your joy and feed the body light. And get out into the sunshine and spark those DNA awakenings in these times. Thank you, Luke. Booyah. Roxy, uh, Luke had another question, and it was yes. if all there is is infinite, how mm -hmm. do souls have age? Why are there young souls and old souls? And what is the difference in their awareness if they always existed? Should I think okay. of my... Okay, I'll, I'll stop there, and then I'll yes. continue after. Yes. Two, lots of ideas flowing here. Yes. The idea of old soul and young soul, hmm? everyone has a soul at the same time. The idea is the key word there, time. As far as your understanding of time in this perspective of being a co-creator on Earth, then yes, there are old souls and young souls. Just how many times they've been here or how, let's say, long they've been interacting with humanity makes them an older soul. Easy recognizable, little side note here, if you have big, big, big self-acceptance, you're an old soul, truly. Mm -hmm. That you're that awesome. So that's part of the illusion of time and the construct. We're all born now, we've always existed, and we've always been forever. When did it start? Right now. When did it end? Right now. If you want to call it that, it doesn't because it's right now. Always. So in that idea, old souls are how many journeys you've been on. So if I'm an idea young soul, let's say this is my thousand journey to humanity and my, let's say, guide on earth is another old soul, another, let's say, friend of mine, and we'll call him an old soul, and he's been here a hundred thousand miles lives. So I'll create interactions with that idea, old soul, so I can experience myself at a different frequency and set up co-creations, whether to be a, let's say, a husband, a wife, a father, a son, a co-creator, a stranger, a lover, doesn't matter. That person is my vibrational reflection for me to expand myself. Now, here's the trick. On the other planet, in another space-time now, 
in another incarnation, I've been there a hundred thousand times, so I'm the old soul over there, but my fractal over here is, let's say, my old soul on Earth, and over there on, let's call it Venus, hmm, they've only been there a thousand times. So truly, it's only the amount of times you've been journeying that humanity has said, this is an old soul. We're all the same idea right now. The idea is how many journeys creates the illusion of an old or younger soul. And remember, the person is in a circle as well. So in other words, if you're on the circle of physicality into spiritual, into physicality into spiritual, and you're on that circle and there's someone behind you, don't think that they're behind you. Hmm? You just haven't caught up to them. So let them go. There's no one behind you and no one in front of you. We're all in the same position of where we're at on our individual journeys. Excellent. Continue. I will speak mostly from Max. <clears throat> there is a couple of wonderful books. Um, the Journey of the Souls and Something Else of the Souls by Michael Newton. And what Max, what I learned there was Yes, the souls are being born. Yes, the souls, the new souls are being born. Like, it is a sophisticated process, and it's officiated by the nurses, soul nurses. So there is a soul nursery. And the tree of life produces new fruits all the time. And the souls go through the process. They Before they incarnate on earth, they... They have to grow a lot and become strong a lot and because just to incarnate on Earth for the first time is is a challenge. It's so dense. So the souls first grow from the very high level and go expand into many different levels, but basically they have to make their structure stronger, their energy flowing through them more harmonious, and learn how to be connected to the source energy while protecting their identity, their main vibration. So that's the key for the souls. And then as they go down, dive deeper and deeper, they can finally dive to the earth. And the first, now I'm switching to the message from Bashar, which is the first, the soul which incarnates first here is capable maybe of living few weeks only. And then as, you know, it might even not be able to be born because it will be too much for that soul. It wouldn't tolerate that. And then the rides become longer and longer and, and the soul matures by learning more and more how to survive here and succeed here and finally how to share the, uh, share the knowledge, share the wisdom. So this is, yes, it is happening from our perspective. This is a very simplified version of the soul growth. Now, if there is a growth, obviously there is a soul time, which is not equivalent to the time in 3D. And here that illusion of time is, is an illusion, of course. The time is an illusion, but it is a powerful illusion, and it is used as a tool for creating and learning. Time is a tool for creating and learning. And this time, one on Earth and one or many in the spirit world are the tools which are used for creating and learning. So, yes, it is an illusion, but it is used, even in the spirit world, and human spirits use it well. It's, in the spirit world, it's much more transparent, much more nonlinear. If you remember... Uh, Siska in Star Trek. That's what he said when he came from the spirit world. He said, gosh, it's not linear. It is not linear. No, it's not linear. Yes, the time there is not linear, but the tool, the illusion used as a tool is still there, and that's what is used for the growth. That allows creation of experience of multiple lives, multiple past, present, future lives. And that experience by itself is wonderful. That is what allows you to draw the talents from the lives in the past. 
in absolute reality, from certain perspective, from certain godly perspective, all lives are in front of you, future and past. But from this perspective of the spirit, of the soul which incarnates right now, the past life are in the past. And again, it's actually, it is in your physical mind's control. It's your choice to which lives to connect. Surprise, so many people have a past life as Cleopatra. It's just even laughable, like millions of people, or hundreds of thousands of people have past lives of, of Cleopatra. How is it possible? Because they choose to have that past life. It's your choice. When you connect, when you tune into that wavelength, you take your radio receiver and connect by adjusting the lever, adjusting the dial, and you connect the frequency of Cleopatra. You resonate with it. Your present vibration becomes aligned, resonating, and it becomes your past life, and you draw tons of experience. And outside world, surprise brings you tons of proof that it was right. So you change your past physical, and you change your presence physically, and you change your spiritual past by choosing your vibration. Booyah. Second part, Sabrina. Um, I'm gonna let uh, Valerie go. Um, mm -hmm. She she has a question at the moment, and then I ask again for a look after. Shoot, Val. All right. Um, I lost a female dog last month. Mm -hmm. She was near and dear to my heart, mm -hmm. and now the male dog that we've had mm -hmm. is nine, and should be ten. Should have been ten in February, but um, he is as we speak, um, taking some of his last breaths. Yes. And um, I just wondered if there was any kind of message for me as mm -hmm. to, you know, why this is all happening so fast. I just, I'm having a hard time with um, the comprehension of it all. Sure. Well, firstly, you chose these ideas in a co-creative moment back then to have this experience. The idea of death for family members, be it that of human or pet, dog, animal, cat, does not matter, is the idea of lack. Everyone experiences a death to know there is no death. There's no lack within. Let's say you have helped these idea entities, entities, not dogs or cats, not birds or fish, entities, to journey to their next idea of themselves. You've provided a womb of love within their frequency bubble, choosing to be within you, the deep felt love. You've taken these two ideas and given them reflections back in the mirror in preparation of their 3D idea experience to be, let's say, perceived in the next now of themselves. You help them ascend, in other words, so rejoice in death, for it is just leaving the room. It's just shifting focus. The exposure to you is the lack of you being whole. For when you feel emptiness, you're missing something, which means there's a hole in your heart that needs, if you choose that word, to be filled with your own love so you are whole again. If here, you don't see any death. It's like there you are and then there you are. So your higher self is looking at the idea of these entity dogs as I'm seeing you here and now I see you here. This is the idea of the pet and this is the idea of the newborn child. You're co-creating with those two entities right now. Hmm? That kind of idea. Why is it happening to you? <clears throat> Thanks for playing. Why is this happening for me? What can I experience from this interaction? I am love. I am the master of my own reality. I am evolving. Not to me. Not quickly in time. Everything is perfect now as you set it up. So what is this doing for me? It shows me that I miss but I know I've helped and serviced, and I know there's another idea. 
So I have been love to these idea entities, and I have serviced them. Rejoice in yourself. Rejoice in your givings that you, not let's say, were not so aware of until just this now. Truly. Maxwell. First, smile. You have to choose to smile first. Yes, there is a hole in the heart. Absolutely. There is that. It doesn't really matter if it is a human or a dog or a cat. Or a horse. Um, yes, in your etheric body, there is a hole. And... It requires healing and it has its own relationship with time. So do that healing, do that Reiki work, do that energy healing work intended to heal. Yet, mentally, mentally, understand that everything is fine. Everything is always fine. Look from the eternal perspective, from, from the perspective of eternity. Think the creation, thank yourself, thank the dog's soul, thank their timing. It's a perfect timing. There is always a perfect timing to leave and and to go away. From eternal perspective, it should have happened someday and this time is perfect because you should understand there is always a reason for the soul to leave the body. And because there is something else more beautiful is waiting <laughs> in this illusion of time, some and even spiritual time, there's something even better is waiting in the next step. Very often, for the human to live this this life is the reason is because another pair of parents are about to conceive, and. It's time for the soul to focus to focus on on this love, on this conception, and then populate this embryo and fetus and become a new child. And also between their incarnations, there is also a wonderful process of retrospection and learning and exploring their past life. So everything has a wonderful timing. And for you, the death of someone dear to you is another way to discover yourself. It's another way to discover your eternal vibration, your core vibration. So do this retrospection. Thank the creation for the experience of having met this dog, for the life. Thank the creation for the life and the friendship. Now it is the time for self-healing with a smile. Understand that everything is perfect. Now it's time to heal with a smile. Blessings. You good, Val? So Excellent. Sabrina. Very good. I will ask the, the next question by look, and it was, uh, should I think of myself as all there it is, or the soul? Um, I am, or the physical being, I am in this life? From our perspective, <clears throat> the idea of a soul is a soul memory complex. It's an idea. We don't, I, let's say, we don't validate the guff, the birthing of a soul, the well of souls, the guff. Hmm. It was an idea played out. On this timeline, we don't validate that. Your soul memory complex is your experience of all of your nows, all at once from different perspectives. That kind of idea. Hmm? It was an idea. You were a thought. All of us were thoughts. The creator started having thoughts, and his thoughts were reflecting back to itself, creating the idea of the individual singularities that you see before the mirror every day. Then we idealized, how do we remember? Poof. Because we were fleeting. We were always going, or going, going. We never reflected 
So we gave ourselves a soul memory complex. We all have them here and now and always had them, always will. There's ideas of that soul memory complex that fractalizes itself as an oversoul into an oversoul into an oversoul and reversing into a fractal into a fractal into a fractal. But it's all one memory bank from the individual perspective of creation, of experience. So consider yourself this entity, I am. The fractal is the suit you're wearing. I am human. But just like the outfit you wore last week, it's in the closet. Maybe it's in the laundry or maybe it's neatly folded in the idea of your chest of drawers. It is an outfit you wore at one space time now to create that experience. Take away time and take away the definitions and look at the body. The body is the idea of the outfit you're wearing right now to create the experience of humanity. The idea of I am is you are all of me and I am all of you hmm? and you are all of us and we are all of you. So the idea of the individual's pers pers <clears throat> pardon me, singularity perspective is you are everything and everything is you. So call yourself if you choose entity I am and leave it alone. Everything trickling off of that is 3D definitions of idea, let's say categorization, comfortable meaning so I can get through this. I need to figure it out. Bullshit. <clears throat> Just be. Ride the wave. Let it come. It'll revolution and reveal itself as you move. The constrictor, the construct of the 3D mind wants to know because you were taught to know, to know, to know, to know, to know. I need to know so I can regurgitate it on a test so I can pass, so I can get to the next grade and continue my life of mediocrity. Or you can just let it go and let the love beam as we projected in our earlier idea opening statement. Allow. Allow the I am to be that. Don't confine it. Be it and let it reveal to you what you had forgotten. This is all we have, Sabrina. Thank you. Um, we'll just say the same thing in, in a different vibration. Same thing in a different vibration. One of their practical ways to feel both is to shift back and forth between the physical and spiritual <laughs> idea, between their traditionally understood physical, traditionally understood spiritual. You do it anyway. During the day you have to talk to people who are so standard standard in the standard way so material in a standard way so typical and who would even be afraid to think of spirituality being present being afraid of alien being present they are so focused on the idea of being everything being material so you have to resonate with them otherwise it's difficult to do simple things like shopping and stuff and working and stuff and earning money and stuff. It's possible, but it's you still have to deal with people. Right? And then you go at night and you sleep and you are there in the spirit all the way. <laughs> so that's that's happening anyway. It, it's it's given, it's automatic. The soul the body complex cannot even survive without sleeping. Some sort of sleep is needed. A real one, or in some in some cases it would be like hidden one, but still there is some reconnection to the spirit all the time, and it's periodic. So it's like breathing, day night, day night, breathe in, breathe out. It's absolutely natural. Now meditations is where you invite your higher self to come into the body and reconnect, and basically 
upload your daily experiences up there and download more of the bliss down here. Here is an image of your computer or cell phone which is enlightened with their with a conversation, with a function, and then it goes to sleep, and at some point it runs out of charge and it's dead, and then you recharge it and it works again. Or here is another idea of oscillation. You are one person at home, and then you go to work, you are another person, or go to school, you are another person. Very different vibe. You even dress differently. You do even paint your face sometimes, or shave. You change your appearance. You vibrate differently. So many different ideas are in you, and then when you come home, the ideas change, your circle of friends change, so you shift in all the time. So this os oscillatory, oscillatory shifting is essential. Now you, it's your choice, but you can choose to serve the ascension by bringing these very different vibrations together. You are a hybrid on every level. So shift back and forth and bring these ideas together, bring the 3D up and bring their spirit down to be able to exist here and to connect. So the main idea is of regrowth, regrowth, growing in the roots of the 3D grow through the veil into the spirit and the roots of the spirit penetrate 3D and become more harmonious, more interconnected, and this becomes a main paradigm, main moving force for the shift. So you, that's what you do with yourself and through yourself with the collective. Thank you. Sure. Hey, greetings. Greetings. Uh, my question is about uh, purification of water and purification of water inside the body. I know about a certain process to purify the water and make the crystal structure to be more harmonic, if you want to say, and I was wondering if I can do the same processes to uh, purify the water within my body, if it's something that is possible. Absolutely. We can discuss it for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yes. Um, coherence is the key word. Coherence. The water is coherent. The water is alive and even conscious. The water is not by chance a basis for life on Earth. It is wonderful the water can change the structure and it carries the structure of all the lives, all the living beings who lived on Earth. The, the cup of water is connected through quantum vibrations of its elementary particles, elementary waves to all the beings who lived on Earth. So all is very greatly charged. That is, the water, the water is a portal and little structures in water are little portals connecting you to everything. Yes, the water carries the disbalance and disharmony of the modern industrial polluted ecology. So just purifying it is essential. Having the natural water nearby is essential. So if you have a clean creek Meditating bare feet in a creek in a good weather with warm water would be absolutely essential because you connect you connect to earth resonances very physically. You can suck it in through your feet. And swimming in natural pure waters is absolutely essential. Now there are herbal teas is a great way to structure water. Herbal teas very inexpensive, very simple way to structure water. Lemon peel, just a piece of lemon peel in water changes structure radically. Bashar's recipe <laughs> changes the structure of the water radically. And now in the body, imagine the main image we send you is, I guess, the image of the city blinking with lights. If you look from the 
to, on the city from above. It's structured, and the lights are blinking, and the cars, every, every car is going its own way through structured pathways. And uh, there is certain structure, certain regulations, certain logic, certain, certain breathing in the, in the city. And compared to the city, the cell is more like the universe, more like the planet and universe. And it's even more harmonious than the city, even more harmonious. There is a beauty, there is music playing, and there is actually many orchestras playing each on each channel. It's more like beautiful ether of multiple wavelengths, each wavelength carrying a harmonious uh, music piece. That's what it is, the cell. And it's all written in the water. It's each, mm, and it's multi-layered, multi-layered. So imagine and pray to it and unite with it. It's multi-layered, multi-dimensional, blinking in and out, in and out, different like a chessboard, where all the cells, all the squares on this chess, more like honey, honeybee, uh, honeycomb, yeah, honeycomb blinking in harmony and different hexagons blinking in harmony or on and on with the on and off with different colors. And that's all 3D. It's more like a tree of life or flower of life blinking in three in in multidimensional, all in harmony. So your meditations and your conscious desire to harmonize it is the most essential. That is what is you can choose and it would be the easiest path to harmonize the water in your body by meditating on it. It's the easiest and most efficient way. The foods, uh, bless your foods, pick the foods meditatively, choose something which is shining, shiny and which calls for you. Every day it would be different, your body oscillates, so different days you would need different foods and uh, different flavors of water, yes. Buy a few magnets and play with their positions, do some research, uh, static magnets are helping to structure the water, so do a little bit of research and your picture with filtered water, uh, tape some little magnets around it and see how the taste of water changes. That would be all for now, we can continue forever. Sheer, this is idea of Cepheus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Ask your question again. My question is about purifying water uh, within the body. I know about okay, the Okay, certain... stop, stop. I don't care what you know about. <laughs> You're asking if you can purify the water in the body. Yes or no? Yes. When does the body become unpurified? The etheric body is perfect. It sits outside of your physical body, always reproducing every second. It is your perceived idea that what is being put into it is unpurifying what is already pure. You can never create entities out of unpure state. You cannot go down, create down, and then go up. Everything is already perfect. You're perfect. I'll give you this. You're a beam of light. Let's say you're your own orb. This is a good visual. You decided to encrust yourself in a shell, in a very thick shell. Let's call it, uh, let's a good equation, barnacles bottom of the boat you have to scrape away you're encrusted you're chipping away from the inside to let your light out your light is not unpure your light already is orb perfect the beam that you're pushing it through the projector of life so to give you this illusion is filtered by those idea encrusted shell and you're letting go of this belief and that belief and that belief to let your light shine through so you can perceive back in the mirror how freaking awesome you are. So you're understanding and looking for a practicum for a particular outcome. Awesome! Yes! That can happen if you choose. That idea. 
But once again, this conduit idea, this idea of me and Osiphius and our lesion, we are going to keep giving you your authority back. We're going to keep giving you exactly what you are, pure. Only conditioned by your state of mind, your belief systems, that for some reason the body is unpure already. It's not. Let go of that belief and know that it will be pure, all the water in you. Those ideas, as Maxwell said, is crystalline. Those idea water is the crystal idea body coming. Yes. But the first structure, stricture, in your terms, is are you pure? Yes. Are you perceiving yourself as pure? <clears throat> Up to you. Are you following, Cher? Yes. Excellent. What else? Um, well, this time in Israel, it's a very that time with everything, everything that uh, is going on here. I just, yes. I was just wondering if there's any like Hope. end to what is there. <laughs> yes. Remember, you chose to be there. You're yes. part of that love. Let's say you are in an idea of a stadium and you are one of the beacons of light on the outside of the stadium while the game is going on. And it's eternal dark, but there is no game without the light. And you are providing the light. The game of Israel is playing out as it's been chosen. chosen. Don't get mad at it. Don't think it's bad. It's not bad. Everything is set in reality in your terms, but we come along, your higher selves, your potentiators, and upset you. Because that's the shift. That's what has to play out in order to give ourselves the polarity perspectives of no choosing. So when that entity is down on that field playing the game, and then finally he looks up and sees your light, and says, fuck that. I'm not playing this game anymore. I'm going to go see what Sheer has. And then there's one more that's not in that game. And then there's less participation in the game. Then there's less of an audience for the game. And then there is no actors on this idea stage no longer, for there is no one in the audience feeding this paradigm. And then Israel will be love. Following? Yes. <laughs> Thank Be you, the beam bro. of light entity. You are that, most certainly. We will, just, we will just repeat the same thing in the same words. <laughs> this time, same vibration, maybe. You. Uh, the, I'm muted. No. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Thank you. The same idea is sometimes it's impossible to choose because the choice is between bad and bad, between the vibe which is not resonating with you, another vibe which is not resonating with you. At the same time, it's impossible not to be unaware, not to be aware. It's not, not possible to be unaware of the dilemma, of the conflict, of the very strong resonating ideas. So again, their possible tool for you would be to shift in and out, shift in and out, and by that heal the situation. So you don't have to take sides. In many cases, it's impossible to take sides. For a pure soul, for a pure vibration, it's impossible to take sides because each side is not of the pure vibration. It's, it's a distortion in a large extent. So seek for new emerging solutions, new emerging groups of light workers, new emerging ideas at the same area and resonate with them and carry the creativity, carry the life force to the ideas which start to resonate with you. They are emerging, the old conflicts which are very artificial at this time, very artificial, very artificial. 
it's if you even go and dig into the conspiracy theories, you just realize that both sides are so tightly connected, it's laughable. You know, the conflicting sides, they have direct phone lines and <laughs> they play the drama by their book. They are mirror reflections in, again, just go to the library and check out Russian journals of 60s and American journals. It's, they are laughable, laughably identical. Just identical. They copied from each other, word to word, letter to letter. It was just a mirror, mirror image of the same thing. It was very artificial. Now it's even more artificial because they are double agents. Everybody is double agent. And you are quadruple agent. You are the agent of the universe. You cannot actually take sides for real. So clear it up. Make it coherent, resonant, beautiful. It's possible. It's doable. And we, the universe, we wouldn't allow the destruction of humankind. We wouldn't allow the suicide. You are being helped from every level. Amen. Thank you. So I have a question from Noha. Um, she wants to um, know, she says, is the actual face, uh, it looks similar to all the past lives that I had. So does the face look similar? Uh, in, in all the lives and because uh, people who regress do recognize themselves from other lives so how is that so? In this idea it's not necessarily the idea of the face it is the eyes that tell the vibration that project through the eyes in physical contact my signature hmm? So through the idea of Roxy, I am Roxy, you would understand that I am Osipius if you saw me in a different incarnation on our different space time now. So making the parallel to the past selves, you are the same frequency. You never lose your individual I am signature. Everyone knows you, you know everybody. Mm -hmm. That kind of idea. You have your own individual phone number if you choose to understand it in that perspective. So in the idea of all of your past lives, the face may seem familiar, but that's the 3D mind through the perceiving mind of distortion saying it's the face, but truly undistorted, it's your own signature. You recognize yourself. But the mind says, oh yeah, I look like that. And it's not everyone saying that, it's you in your subjective universe. Truly. Maxwell. Yes, yes, just seconded it. The, the answer is yes, the same, yep. So, roughly it's one-third, one-third, one-third. All the babies look so much more similar to each other than adults. And the babies are born beautifully perfect, rounded, very similar. And then as they develop, they become more and more and more different. And there is... Uh, genetic component, a genetic component, predetermined genetic component. Mm, okay, okay, it's illusion, but still, it's a strong illusion. A strong illusion of predetermined genetic predetermination. A strong illusion of genetic predetermination. Yes. So, one third is predetermined, at least in mainstream 3D idea, it's predetermined. But of course, you can shift and change this predetermination. Second third is spiritual, predetermined, some, some very inner, very core vibration which comes from the past lives, from your higher self, from which penetrates and resonates and unites, very, very really unites all the lives of yours. And the third one, of course, is of your choosing and life experience. That's your choices, illusion of choices. Very strong illusion, absolutely strong illusion. Free will. You choose who you want to be, and you choose circumstances, and you choose how you go through life. And the circum circumstances and how you react to them, that impresses on your face. You always can change your face by shifting into the new you. You always can shift, and the traces of your traumas will be wiped away and replaced with a smile and joy. It's all doable.
<sighs> yes, you can shift. And the understanding is a third predetermined, a third past lives, and third you create, roughly. Okay, one more question also. Uh, how is the face actually uh, similar to the soul? Is there is a sensitive, is there a similarity between the two? You know, some people when you look at their faces, they go, I can't touch your soul. Your soul, ah, oh, touchable, you know? So how, can, how is there, is there similarities between the two? The actual and the soul. It the is, idea. Yes, go ahead. The idea of the soul, once again, is the idea of the human idea given by your structure of that you can lose your soul through your religious idea beliefs. You can't lose your soul. No one can take it from you. It is not to be bartered with and not to be tossed up. Truly, it's not their eyes to the soul. It's eyes to you, the individual I am. The soul is a stricture, a construct, a limitation of what you understand 3D reality to be from your religious aspects that was given the soul. If you didn't have the term definition soul, you would not be on this idea conversation. But since it was given, look at it and loosen it up. The recognition of the idea, you equate it to soul. You look at the face and I can see your soul. Of course, you recognize each other. Everyone knows you just walk up to a person and you have this instant connection and they're a complete stranger and you looked into their eyes and you equated, I saw your soul. Or you fall in love with their soul. Yes, that's fine. But truly that was an idea of what was birthed out of the fear concept of God's dangling your soul in front of you. So if you don't, I'm going to toss it into eternal hellfire. Let's say my unconditional love, I'll do that for you. <clears throat> Thanks for playing. Make sense? No, huh? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Maxwell. Thank you. Just, uh, yes, just an illustration. Um, two parents, a child, and the child is <laughs> kidding the, the, their features of each of the parents, right? There is something in the in the face which reflects the soul vibration. It's not everything in the, in the face which comes from the soul, but there is that imprint of the soul on the face. Like the holographic, if you ever saw the holographic uh, plate, the holographic plate, now they make them they sell them, uh, they imprint them on money and credit cards and stuff like that. A holographic plate, like a piece of photograph which is shiny and when you look at it at a certain angle, you just three, see a 3D object. Something imprinted on this physical object. So is the soul imprinted on the face and at certain angle, just from this face, you can reconstruct the wonderful multidimensional origin multidimensional source which which was imprinted on the face. So from the face it is possible to reconstruct the vibration. It is imprinted there. Like when you look at the picture of a famous, uh, no, of ingenious artist, the painting of ingenious artist, just from his painting, you from their painting you can reconstruct the vibration of the artist. It's not the same thing, it's not identical, but it, it is possible to reconstruct Renoir from his painting and um, Manet from his paintings and so on. Yes, yeah, so it is a reflection, but, but it is not identical. It's very different actually. It's a crystal which carries the, the imprint of the source, but it's not the source and the soul doesn't have that, the, the soul doesn't have a face. It can come up in, a, in any image it wants but it doesn't have a face. But it can be reconstructed from the face. Thank you. Wendy? Yes, hi. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. I send you my love. I love to you. Deep love. My initial question was regarding the physical experience of our other selves, our other timelines. Um, Your other it, probable selves? 
probable, I guess that would be a, a better. Well, let me read. ask you this: Is are you talking about Wendy on Earth at this time, and your probable yes. Wendy's that turn right and left? Well, the question was: Is um, we seem to be have the ability to, to um, experience physical changes in our physical body, um, but they, uh, but yet seem to be tied to perhaps what we would consider other lives. Um, so, for example, I was wondering if one, you, uh, the first part of the question is, could you expand a little bit about actually experiencing something from another timeline and, and the reason we would um, be experiencing that physical type of a reaction from another timeline. And then the second part was when um, Max just brought up about painters. The experience of feeling the energy when I walk into a museum as if I'm feeling the actual physical um, ex emotions of the artists themselves. So your first part of your question is about probable selves. Is that well, true? It's, it's how do we? Ex how is it that we are Wait able to actually experience physical changes in our body from? Are you not? This is difficult for me, Wendy. I apologize because your question is distorted. Do you have a probable self that, let's say, didn't turn on the computer and be on the show today? Yes or no? Yes, of course. Okay. So, what do you want to experience from that probable self? What about um, the physical changes? This is what I'm missing. Okay, the question, let me rephrase the question. Many times people will feel, say for example, you'll see something on your skin or you'll have a physical pain and, and you're directed to the idea that it came from a, we call, some people call them past life regressions. We know they're simultaneous incarnations. So my question is, is how are we able to physically have a physical reaction to our other um, etheric selves? Many of us. How will do you know it's a physical reaction to an etheric self? Because it doesn't appear to be connected to anything in this particular physical reality. So, in other words, a burn just appears on your hand. Very good example. Thank you. Yes, that's what I was going for. That idea. Yes. So it just appears on your hand, and you have something like that. It yeah. Into exactly. An idea of a probable self. Because exactly. the idea is. All right, stand by. We're clear now. Very good. All right, you ready? Are you ready, Wendy? You're good? Yeah, go for it. Perfect. Thank you. So the idea of probable selves class is a tough one for a lot of humanity by choice of experience through offering the idea first brought forth by that of Seth in 1968. So the idea of what you would call probable selves. You have one self and now I want you to multiply yourself in a million different directions all the way around. All the way up, all the way down, in every single imaginal 360 degree bubble direction. You have all of those selves. This is how you never miss anything. Because it's all being energized by one idea, your higher self. So was you, the individual fractal, compared, compared hmm, limiting word, but translatable to human mind at this time compared to this self next to you that chose differently to experience that self to experience that self to experience that self you chose this self to experience this self to experience this self so you're awake and you are connecting to these other selves so if this other self over here can't heal itself but you can it'll give you the healing opportunity so you can do it. That's one aspect. That's one tiny little thing. This is not one circumferencing idea answer. This is so endless and so huge to really what's going on. If you guys did echo the idea of Seth, you would know that you're popping in and out, blinking on and off of a billion different selves all right now. Your higher self is looking at Roxy here, looking at Roy in the other time, looking at the idea of the, let's say, Roxy not choosing to wake up, Roxy who, let's say, won a lottery at one time, or the Roy that, let's say, got married and didn't get divorced and had children and didn't get a vasectomy. 
all of those lives are going on. So this idea of this one that's chosen to be awake is Roxy's fractal here. This fractal can have the ability to connect to the simultaneous lives and offer just by the awareness of simultaneous probable self lives you can offer. So sometimes in the physical realm you will connect to those idea entities and offer healing and they will just give you their idea. And there will be physical shifts at some times. Oh, yes, most certainly. But I have a billion of me's going on right now, and right now I am viewing a billion Roxy's. And out of those a billion Roxy, there lies another billion versions of each one of those billions. So it's endless, truly, is what it is. This is not a finite answer. This is an expansive question. This question, as Max said earlier, can go on forever. Because the human concept of what you allow yourself framework to be acceptable in your reality cannot structure this in a, let's say, a conducive, conducive way to categorize it where it is tempoed equal to that of your resonation with your matrix mind of illusion. In other words, it's like, ah, I can't figure it out. You can't figure this one out. But as you allow it, you will open up more and more just by tickling it. All this conversation we're having right now is now tickling the idea of these probable selves that are going on. And that will expand it on its own. But no finite answer here, most certainly not. But this is your connection to your physical right self, physical left self, physical other selves, past lives, future lives. All the time, guys. You exist now because your future self of this incarnation fractal woke you up to get you to that now so you can create that now. And that now says, hey, back there. And you go, yes, and follow this joy. And you go, whoop. So that now can exist in the fractal that you are, that you go. But if you don't go there, another portion of you will. Your higher self blinks in and out and gets every moment of experience from all angles, all the time, all now, absorbing it. Because we don't have time. We have now. Just like you guys view in the 3D reality realm, space, it's easy to move around. There's space everywhere. It's natural. That's how we view time up here. We don't have to deal with it. It is part of our reality. It's no time, truly. So I'm experiencing all of the me's that I am. You are experiencing all of the you's that you are. All of your other selves are communicating with you, and you are communicating with your other selves. If there's an idea healing needed, absolutely. Bring it in. It'll let you know. It may appear. <gasps> uh, and then poof. But don't play it off. My words, this is an individual subjective, it's karma. Because you can't have karma. Why? Because everything is now. So you're kicking yourself in the ass for something that hasn't happened yet. Think about it. So anyways, the idea, it's not that structure of a past life or a scary thing or a payoff bullshit. What it is truly is you're awake. You are sucking in light so quickly of your other people that are around you going, hello, give me, give me, give me. So you're coalescing all this light and beaming it out, and coalescing and beaming it out, coalescing and beaming it out. So your probable selves are going, Boop, give it to you. You got this. And you go, absolutely. <gasps> and it may appear on this conscious mind as another idea of frequency translated by your distortion. Sure. But know that you are choosing it for you and your other selves, by you and your other selves, all the time. Maxwell. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, yes, absolutely. What practically to do with it? <laughs> For the physical mind, it's <laughs> mind-boggling. It's impossible and doesn't very serve very much to tr to try to glean into parallel realities. There is, there are wonderful, very smart spiritual entities who guard the separation of timelines. The veils are conscious, smart, benevolent, and without their help, the timelines wouldn't be able to exist and evolve in a proper manner. <laughs> in programming, 
one of the biggest inventions of modern programmers was separation of layers. Different layers don't change the code of each other or don't send messages to each other directly. They have to go through proper channels between layers of the programs. And so on. So it is similarly in the idea of timelines and separation. So when the breach happens and certain thing penetrates vibration, vibration from one to one, it is sometimes happens for the reason, sometimes it happens because it doesn't really matter, sometimes one or another, yes, or both. What do you do about it? Because it's out of your control. Oh, almost everything is out of your control. Almost all circumstances are out of your control. What is in your control is you, your vibration, your take on things, how you react on things, and how do you create new things. Seeding, this male component of the creation, masculine component of the, crea of the, of the life, is seeding new things. And mm, feminine component is growing things, old things, growing old things, growing new things. Just feeding, growing, harmonizing, beautifying. The beauty is the answer. Whatever is harmony, whatever is beauty, whatever improves your coherence, the coherence of your smaller and bigger world, whatever expresses your inner core vibration is in your control and this is follow how follow your excitement this is the key create your world and whatever comes to you from parallel timelines from past lives you have the choice whether to resonate with it accept it or how do you say it counter resonate ignore or counter resonate reject it yes and it will go away if you wish. It's easy to heal past lives, traumas. Just do it. You are entitled. Amen. DNC's, really? DNC's, I have an interesting question from a member called Luca. Um, I'm going to have to phrase oh. this correctly because there is a multitude of questions within the questions. Stand by real quick, Roy. You there? Yep. Wendy, are you done with your questions? Did you have a second half? Um, I think basically it was answered. I think it was more of a the the same along the same lines as um, I was just referring to the energy one can feel when they're in yes. the presence of artwork, and I, I it was sort of along the same lines as feeling the energy behind the artist and it seems to be a very emotional experience for me walking into a museum and so I was All just right. listen to this real quick we want to finish this up and then me continue really let's say thank you for your consideration on this matter the idea is what you are feeling is a probable self another self let's say Roxy is not a composer but most certainly within her legion there is a composer hmm? She doesn't choose the idea to write music, but when she listens to certain ideas of that vibration composer creation, she melts. So the idea you're experiencing when you walk into an art idea is you are a probable self that you are, it, are experiencing, have experienced, are that fractal of yourself in full life. So you are connecting more and more to your other selves, your legion behind you that was the painter. So you are feeling what the painter created in that room. You are becoming one more and more. The shocking ideas of you connecting to your other selves, the mind wants to figure it out. We understand. But what it truly is, is you know you are that. Your higher self painted those ideas. Maybe not the physical ones in front of you, but the connection. Make sense? Are you following this, Wendy? Yes, thank you. I needed to hear that. Thank you. Perfect. Booyah. Continue, One Roy. more. Oh, 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 oh. Just, just a second. Ah, yes, one, more, one more little addition is that the property of four density is ability to connect to timelines in much more 
clear way. So you're just experiencing the future of the humanity. Uh, the humanity shifts to the ability of connecting much clearer beyond this veil between uh, and uh, in the four density again protected by the veils that ability would be much more expressed so yes it is absolutely natural to be able now to deal with those vibrations and to deal creatively thank you thank you thank you both namaste Adonai. And Go my ahead, gratitude towards the entities for the awareness of expanding upon that question. Thank you. Um, I'm sure that helped out many other people doing that. Um, this question is a little bit different. Um, Luca wants to know about the spiritual meaning of masturbation mm -hmm. entities, dear ones. And I'll just explain a little bit more in his question what, he, what he's typed here. He would like to ask what your perspectives are about the body's energy levels after masturbation, how it affects it, and if abstinence is better if you want to conserve the energy or transmute it. What are your perspectives on that? You want to take this one, Max? Roxy's laughing. <laughs> He's got a lot of fun ideas in here. Yes, just a second. Ah. <laughs> now, <laughs> how long do we want to talk about this? Let's take it briefly. Yes. Um, how would be sure nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing wrong with masturbation, female, male. The guilt, the guilt and shame are part of the culture, so you have to deal with that culture one way or another. The energy levels, of course they shift radically. Of course they shift radically. You can read by the energies of the person if they are mm, the male haven't released the sperm for a long time, there is a different energy. A female, she doesn't have the orgasm for a long time, it has a very different energy. Nothing wrong with either one. Self-love is, that could be an expression of self-love. And then also it can be expression of self-healing self in many ways. It also can be uh, evolving to extremes where it is detrimental for health, energy flows, and actually pollution with pornography for some. Some search for coherence, search for beauty, search not for quick release but long-term benefits. Be wise and think outside of immediate urge towards day-long er, day balance, multiple day-long balance, week-long balance, and so on. That's about the balance, about the focus where you really want to go, where you do you really want to go. Sometimes that idea of self-love helps you to connect to others, really helps you to connect to your lover when you can feel yourself, when you understand yourself, when you have that the orgasm, either it's self-inflicted or the orgasm which is uh, created by you and your lover or lovers is uh, could be and is by design multidimensional and could be a very enlightening experience. So learning it it's a basis of the <laughs> connecting your body multidimensionally, yes. One way or another. You don't have to go this path if you don't feel, feel called by, but that's a valid, one of the valid permission slips, yes. I'll hold on a second. Yes. 
your choice could be to make it a highly spiritual experience. Your, whole, your choice is to pray before, during, and after to connect to your higher spiritual component through the process. One is it self-inflicted or with that's that's it for now. All right. <clears throat> the idea of masturbation. Roxy was laughing because she says do it. She loves it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. <clears throat> now let us go into the idea of, let's say, the energies you're talking about. All right. You're missing an energy. Maybe you're not aware of. We will bring it to your awareness. That of Luca. We call you Luca. <laughs> the idea is this. You have a vibration of your vital energies, the vital energies that sustain what you call your 3D reality. Hmm? Sex, orgasm, replenishes them. It does not deplete them. Your physical idea energies are depleted after such a performance, whether it's solo or with many. Hmm? Matters not. It actually connects a circuit that has been opened. That's what calls you to what you guys created, the idea of horny. You want to connect that circuit between the energy bands that lie within. When you close that circuit with the eternal idea of going to the purple ray band orgasm, the big O, like you, you call it, then that idea revitalizes your energies, your vitals that help give you more energy in this. Depletion of energy that you're feeling is the idea of the depletion of the physical body. That's why you go to sleep, get rest, relax. Hmm? Simple, easily replenishable. The vital energies are the add of sexual. You guys wouldn't have sex if it wasn't needed. It is part of your creation. Abstinent is another stricture, a construct, a limitation. If I'm abstinent, I am this or that. Sure, great, enjoy it. Take that ride. That is your journey. We love you because you are creating that proportion, that portion, that perspective of creation for everyone to experience within themselves. Thank you for your service. However, we're here to unlimit the limitations. Hmm? That is a limitation to be abstinent in let's say deny yourself your natural urges natural urges as far as being a human structure an incarnation you program the entire thing before you came down here the logos which you guys know is the Sun part of the programming humans will be a B and C period that's part of it sex is co-creation but it is also pleasure because we're gods we have a good time that's part of the experience. Deny yourself truly if you choose. We love you either way. Or go and yank Hank. We don't care. Have a good time. Uh, we would add a couple ideas. Thank you. Roxy, yes. Uh, one is of service. Helping your lover to reach the ecstasy is the idea of service. So, with true love, you would go out of your way to help your lover to reach that when they need it, when they want it. And the other way around, if they don't need it, if they don't want it, if it's not their phase, don't offer but don't push. Offer but don't force it. Don't beg, don't push, don't force it. And if they're not in mood, it's very wise and if you cannot tolerate if you are full of sperm or full of the energy which you need to release it's it's very wise with their permission to <laughs> masturbate because they don't want and you don't want it's out of service you don't push them and don't beg and don't ask and don't force them it is by design their cycles of yours and your lover sometimes are in perfect synchrony and often they go asynchronously by design there is a per imperfection there so you play all the scenarios of service and self-service and trust and 
allowance, trust and allowance. And the second idea is physical depletion is not absolutely necessary. In some cases, it doesn't happen. If you intended right, you may make a miracle and go physically recharge right after. It's possible, although it's an exception. Thank you. All right, guys. We got uh, one last question from Carolina, and then we'll be wrapping it up with a blessing. Hello, this is Carolina. Um, you, you Hello. Just, um, going back to the uh, to the other selves. Sorry for changing back to the subject. Uh, it's Why just are you a sorry? question. Carolina. Is, is Carolina. Yes. Please don't be Can sorry you for your joy. I can hear you. All right, okay. Don't be sorry. Um, Don't be sorry for your joy. All right. Speak your truth. There's love Thank in this room. You. All right, I'm not sorry then. I just have a Ooh, question. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I like to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Go ahead, Dom. Those, do all other selves share the same higher self? Yes. Probable selves of human incarnation same, share the same higher self, absolutely. That higher right. self is another higher self as well, and an oversoul, 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 and it's just this one big idea of one. Hmm. So in that idea, I, let's say, <clears throat> will give you, let's say, this equation. Roxy has a higher self. Let's call it Osiphius for clarity at this time. I am blinking in and out of all of my other probable mannequins. The mannequins that are the fractal you understand is Roxanne in the physical realm. So every time I burst into that mannequin, it becomes alive for that split second. And then I get the experience of that split second. And then I move to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And I'm shifting. And I'm getting all of myself in time. That's why their time is such an ally. It's so beautiful because we get to see so much truth. Anywho. So yes, I am experiencing the higher self of Roxy. Roxy here and now, right now, when I just said here, I experienced a billion other of me at the same time. And I'm getting all of those. And as this fractal, Roxanne, that you understand on this parallel timeline that you're co-creating, gets a choice, that fractal is me choosing the next idea of this fractal, me. And this one chooses, and this one chooses, and this one chooses, and all of them, until every single scenario is, let's say, played out, done. This fractal moves on, moves the room. This other fractal doesn't die yet, or this one already died. It doesn't matter, because it's all me, the higher self. So now, once again, you are tickling the idea of bending your mind of logic, which is excellent. We uh, thank you truly for this question. Because now it gives you new perspectives, new shifts of awareness. You might be arguing with yourself, which is great, that no, it can't work that way. How can that be possible? That's right, because that's what we want you to do. We want you to dig into your mind of a limitation and beat the shit out of it and work it out and have fun and allow it and ex let it go. But don't get mad at it. Don't look for an answer. Don't have an outcome. Don't try to be anything except what you are in the moment, all of yourselves. Go ahead. Next one. Thank you so much. And um, uh, we don't—they don't have to be all human, do they? We uh, our, or our our. Oh no, 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 certainly not. But you have all these probable selves we were focused on through the basis of Wendy's question was the probable selves of human. But you have a no, a lot of other selves as well. Oh yes, different incarnations, different ideas, sunbeams, moonbeams. That's an incarnation, densities, ideas of being interdimensional. Those are probable selves. When you guys realize, when you wake up fully to yourself on how big you are, because this played out a long time ago, so the, immediately, the immediacy of thinking of who you are right now, right now you are a billion times larger than that. So you're that large, and you have other probable selves playing out themselves from the higher self. But remember this, the higher self and all of the experience, has a higher self that's receiving all of those experiences right now. But see, the key here, guy, guys and gals, 
it's not a higher self in that aspect it's somebody else if you are not looking up to the higher self you are looking down at all of yourselves for clarity up and down idea of polarity because it fits in your construct so you have all of these this they're all you they're all you booyah make sense yes yes thank you so much beautiful much love. Much love to you, darling. Thank you for that, Rox. Mm, you're most welcome. Yes, thank you. That was awesome. Yes, so on that note, um, Max, did you wish to say anything else? I'll pass on this time. Okay. So um, we're going to wrap it up now. And uh, I want to thank Max and, and Roxy for channeling for us today. That was really good. And um, we will do our, our, our uh, blessing at the moment. So, uh, Wendy, would you like to do it? Yes, yes. Our deepest gratitude for all present today and the energies that have been brought here together. Ni saliu koti a maliasa te ya kaiora si a malakahi tu. Maliasa tolu yo ko a shapliya kahi o nani ano a kaliya ko tolu ya kapora hi. Sona no a kaliya so tolu yo a kaya pa ki a liya so tolu shumaka. Singa a liya tolu ko a miya ka ta ya ko liya samiya na ya na ki a ta ya ka shora. Si ti liya kahi o ya ko a mina a i ka sa tolu ko a pa ya ona. Isoi koya kali ya sataya, ashoya, I see an aliwa kaikia porahisa. Si tolu wa kasaya kali ya tolu koya pigi ya nama ya koya ya uasa ya katia ya. Ni mali ya koya hisho koya paya, sili ya sora. Ni ama ya koya le ya hika iso tolu koya shaya koya sa. Si na tole ya kasi ya toyo koya hama yu koso yu washa. Ni la ya katia toyo koso tolu yu washa noa. May from this moment forward you see yourself as the grain of sand, as the leaf on the tree, as the star in the sky, as the drop of rain, as the ocean, the river, as the street you walk on, the blade of grass that you lie upon. And each of you is a part of each of you. Ikato yoko asato yoko saloa pa shiataya asato yoko asato lua shakiatai sata a frequency of the one frequency, a light of the one light. Ikiato yoko ashaniato yuasa a diako to yua reflecting back to one another. Ishato yoko aha sitea hisanonoa with every breath. Ikimiato ya mahala kuasato ya namaste. 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 Well, Namaste. Thank you all for today, for uh, being here, participating, asking your questions. Um, I think we all learned from them, so I'm sure everybody else appreciates the questions. And um, now I would like to give it to Roy. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. Um, it's been a wonderful session. I'm going to say big thanks to Asifius and Max's channels coming through and doing that and providing those answers. Um, I, I made a little mistake earlier about the 11, 11 Hangout that's happening on the 11th of November. It's happening at 11, 11 a.m. PST, Pacific Standard Time, and that would be 2.11 p.m. EST and 8.11 p.m. GMT plus one, which would be um, UK time. Oh, Rowie, like really, yes. Um, and I wanted to add, too, just for, um, I haven't posted it yet, but I'm also going, I'm planning to do something beginning at 11, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time as well um, on 11, 11. I just haven't had the opportunity to, to get the posting completed yet. So I just wanted to, to mention that as well. So I'm hoping to kind of start something at that time on Central Standard Time as well at 11.11 a.m. 
Perfect. Thank you so much, Wendy. That's brilliant. Um, the um, the hangout uh, will be uh, the, the ideas. Of the hangout will be personal integrity, belief systems, taking responsibility. What type of world do you want to live in, and what type of world do you wish to propagate, and what type of world do we desire to leave for the next generation? So I hope you can all tune in for that. Don't forget our next webinar is coming up later on today and tomorrow. Um, there's plenty of stuff going on in the week. Please also don't forget if you if you're doing your webinars, um, you're a member of Hukolo, and you're not doing uh, an official Hukolo webinar. Please announce them wherever you can. Um, let people know where they're doing them. The YouTube links if they do if they can't come and participate, and that will just help our community grow. Thank you everybody for a wonderful webinar. We'll see you next week for our regular webinar. Jim will be back with us again. So if you have um, questions regarding the colonies, please get them ready for next week. And um, we wish you all the love in the world and all the love in the universe. In infinity. I think that's more for it. Do you want to yeah. say bye as well, Kim? Bye, everybody. <laughs> have a wonderful time. Thank you for the channeling. I love you all. Thank we'll you see you next for coming. Week. Love you guys. Bye bye. Love you, Roxy. Love you all. Thank you. Love you. Bye bye. Bye.